Matthew 16, starting in verse 17. I think you know the preceding verses there. Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Who do they say that I am? And then he said, who do you say that I am? And right here we see Jesus answered and said to him, after Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, or you are the Messiah. He says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Say, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We see in this passage that Jesus said, I will build my church. So whose church is it? It belongs to Jesus first. And, and this is the thing about on this rock, I will build my church. The rock of that statement that he made about you are the Messiah. You are, you know, God. You are God in the flesh, basically. And it's also based on Peter, who would be the opener of the early church. The guy that used to be like a reed became the rock. And God is building rocks here in San Diego. Hello. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word you've given me. Help me to minister effectively to every person in this room. We thank you for Pastor Al and Regina and the ministry of all the leadership. Jesus name. Amen. You can be seated and tell the person next to you say this is my church too. So ultimately this church belongs to the Lord. Victory outreach belongs to Jesus. Cuz Jesus is the one that says I will build my church. He's the foundation. He's the cornerstone. The foundation of this church of course is Jesus Christ. He is the cornerstone of who we are, what we are doing, and where we are going. In Ephesians chapter 2, I want you to turn there real quick if you have a Bible, or look on the screen, 2.18. It says, through him we both have access to the Father. Now through him, right? Through him, meaning Jesus. Okay? Through, to the Father, Father, and by one spirit. So that just says right there in that one phrase, the Trinity. The trinity of the Godhead. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. I like that part, too, because it speaks of family. We are now no longer out there, out there in the streets, out there. But now we have been taken into the church. We're the called out ones, the treasures out of darkness. And it says, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a chief cornerstone. I like this part too. I'm going to stop for a moment because not only in the early days was there apostles and prophets, but even in our era with, for instance, Dave Wilkerson, he was like a prophet of his day when he was alive. And, and then you have Nikki Cruz, a real evangelist. And then you got my dad who's an apostle. And then we got Prophets, even in our ministry that have passed away, like Pastor Ed Morales. We have a foundation of powerful leaders. Some of them are in heaven. But we have a foundation in Jesus Christ because he's the chief cornerstone. He's the one that keeps it all together. It says in him who the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So the church really isn't this building. With, with you guys not here, this church would be dead. It would be a morgue. You walk into it and say, wow, this is dead. But when you come with the Holy Spirit, built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, looking to your heavenly father for what God wants to do next, you're bringing that life and you're building this house on the foundation of Jesus. So we too are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives in. Chief cornerstone of this house is Jesus Christ. I can't emphasize that enough. Some synonyms that I looked up for cornerstone is basis, bedrock, bottom, footing, foundation. But my favorite one is this, 
base. This is a base. So you got the naval base, but you got the victory outreach base. And we're warriors. We don't fight in the flesh, but we fight in the spirit. And this week we fought for souls all over victory outreach, reaching treasures out of darkness. And they have been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he is the essential. Jesus is the fundamental. He is the foundation. In other words, without Jesus, we are nothing and we lose everything. Once we get our eyes on man too much, once we get our eyes on just the ministry or the vision over Jesus, then we can lose the whole thing. He's the foundation. He's the one we build upon. And he says, you know what? I will build my church, but I'm also partnering with us, with you. He says, we are partners with Christ in building his church. That's what the scripture talks about. Everyone plays an important role to use their abilities to build this church. In other words, you have gifts. You have talents. You have money, some of you. Whatever you can do to contribute to building this house is worth a lot unto the Lord. Because he wants us to partner with him in building his kingdom and building his church and building this base. Paul understood the importance of establishing a community of believers. He was one of the greatest in this area. Wherever he went, he committed to seeing people established in Christ. He would spend years in certain places of the regions and different parts of, 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 of those days. And, and he would begin to plant churches, a real apostle. My dad has done that too. Starting it with the mother church. Then what happened next? Came over here next. Actually, during that time in the mother church, there was a problem in Amsterdam. He spent three months or more staying there in an apartment with my mom to repair the problem of, of, of a breakup over there. Then he spends about seven years here, right? Six to seven years to turn this church around. And then handed it off to these two. And now they're taking it to another level. Not only that, my dad has spent time in Panama. Now he's in San Jose. I mean, he's doing all these things. That's apostleship. And there's more apostles that are going to rise up. We're not going to have to call everybody apostle, but the function of it. That's the main thing. And so this is what Paul said of himself in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Are you still with me? Chapter, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 9 to 15. Let's read. For we are co-workers in God's service. See that? Co-workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. By the grace God has given me, meaning Paul, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. And someone else is building on it. Hello. But each one should build with care. Say care. care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light. The day of judgment will be judged for our works. Y'all got quiet in this room. It will be revealed with fire. It's a scary verse even for me sometimes. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. See, quality. Quality. Yeah, this is a quality ministry built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. We build with care. We build with compassion. We build with hard work. We build with our talents, our gifts, our abilities, and whatever God has put in us, we build with that. And it goes on to say, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. I like that part better. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one is escaping, escaping through the flames. In other words, you'll make it into heaven, but you're smelling on smoke. So you were so close to hell. But by the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, you are saved. But what a day that will be when in my Jesus I will see, when he looks upon my face. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, what a day that will be. 
and he offers you in. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So you don't have to smell like smoke, but you can get involved in this ministry and raise up, you, you know, pull up your arms, your sleeves, and say, let's go. It's like a, the whole making shows, and my wife likes to look at these things all the time. And they renovate houses and all that. So I'm, I like Dodgers. I just put the Dodgers in. Once the Dodgers is over, it goes to home channel or whatever you call it. And those things, you need designers, different types of contractors, kind of like what you're doing here. Painters, electricians, etc. I know what it is to build a building. And it could be stressful. But thank God it ultimately came about. And God is doing tremendous things there in the mother church too. But what I'm trying to say is there's different giftings, different gift mix and talents that God has given to this congregation. So you can't just be sitting on a pew every week, once a week, for a half an hour sermon and go home and just do business as usual. God wants you to apply what you learn and say, you know what, I have something to offer. I can do something for God. And you say, let me in, coach. Along this journey, we have learned many things. 52 years of ministry has been a long journey for my parents, but we keep moving forward no matter what. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. Now, let me give you some tools we all use to build the house real quick. Are you ready? Number one is real simple. Worship. Worship is a big deal for Victory Outreach. This is a house of worship. We build this house through worship. We worship with our talents, our time, and our treasure. That's how you worship God. It's not just coming to sing a few songs. And go home and just do whatever. It's about using all those three to build this house. Now let me give you some things that, in Hebrew. Okay, some words that have to do with worship. The Hebrew word for praise is halu. Where we get the word hallelujah. It means to praise God with great excitement and enthusiasm. It's like winning a Super Bowl or the World Series. Those people could cheer for hours for a game. And I liked it. We walked into this building, and you had the enthusiasm. You had the excitement. There was a real hallelujah spirit here. And there still is right now. So that's the first one. The next one is Shabbat. Shabbat. It means praise God with a quiet voice. No. The opposite. A loud voice. A victory shout. I, I can't stand it when I walk into a church and it's so, like, dead. I'm thinking, why did I accept this booking? Oh, my God, I want to speak in San Diego. If you're watching me right now, it's not you. I forgot, we're live. Uh. Still love you guys. Catch some of the fire, though. Okay, there's another word called yada. You ever heard of that one? It means to praise God with uplifted hands, which represents our whole body, soul, and spirit being offered to God as a living sacrifice. That's why when we lift our hands, it's not just, okay, I'm just going to lift my hands as they say to lift my hands. You got to know what you're doing it for. You're offering God your body, your soul, your spirit, your mind, everything belongs to you. I'm a living sacrifice, God, and I, I'm so grateful. So when I lift my hands, I lift them with, with meaning. I'm not lifting them just to, just to say because the pastor said, I'm lifting it because I know that you saved my soul, and I know that you are the leader of my life, mind, body, soul, and spirit. I, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. And there's another one called Toda. Say Toda. Praise God as an act of faith, in anticipation of meeting your needs, knowing that God is able and willing to do so. So when you come into this house or come into a situation, a problem, what you do is turn your praise on. You turn the toda on. You turn it on and you begin to praise him even in the fire. Even when you, you don't want to come to church, but this is the best place to be when you are in the dump, when you don't feel good, when you're feeling down. And you, you got to just come in and say, I choose to praise him 
in my storm, in my trial. I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to lay my sword down. I praise you. I praise you. Somebody needs to praise him right now. Zamar, to praise God with a musical instrument. David played the harp, and we could join with the instruments in praising and singing. That's why I like to see people open their mouths during worship. In the early days when my dad started, I was a little boy back in Glust Street, not Glust Street, uh, St. Louis Street, and uh, most of the time I, I would end up under the pew going to sleep, but I remember during the praise and worship, I remember my dad telling me, you guys got to open your mouth. <laughs> and he started here like that too, right? When he came over here, he started retraining people because they weren't worshiping. They weren't praising. They weren't opening up their mouth. They weren't lifting their hands. But something shifted in this room. Something shifted over the years. These guys would be homeboys. They would be against the wall with their big mustaches and some of them nodding out and this and that. He says, open your mouth. <laughs> My dad even tried playing the trumpet. He tried playing the piano. He tried playing the organ. And he didn't do great at all those things. But finally, God filled those roles with musicians in the early days all the way up to 2019. Now we have the best music, I believe, in the world. Powerful. So you praise him by singing, you praise him by clapping. Yeah. That's a good instrument. Right. Clap those hands, all your people. Right. Shout unto God with a voice of truth. See, David wasn't ashamed to praise God in public. He went out with his ephod and he was beginning to dance. And they, some of them mocked him because he was a king and he was out there doing that. But he learned that in the shepherd's field. He learned that I'm, I'm gonna worship God in the private and I'm gonna worship God in the public. Because I'm not ashamed of the one who's been with me all these years. And that's what we do at Victory Outreach. We never forget where we came from. We never forget. We stay on, on track. And then we got Tahila. It sounds like tequila. <laughs> so we're not praising him with tequila. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, I want tequila. No, 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 no. It means to praise God by singing. God inhabits the praise of his people. The last one on this part is Barack. Not Barack Obama. <laughs> Barack means, I love this one too. Bless God by kneeling or bowing before him. When I, when I get my prayer time, I don't always stand unless I'm really tired. I kneel. One couple times I'm prostrated before the Lord in desperation when we're going through our building campaign and it's not going well and it was an economy crash, all that stuff. It caused me to get down in Barack with the Lord and get in that place of I need you more than ever. And from that morning, that day, remember we got a promise? We re-promised two and a half years into the project and then we got up, went out there and we continued to preach faith Two and a half years later, we entered our building. Wow. Entered our building. <laughs> but it takes getting down. The next one, I'm going to go through this one quick, is we got to build with the house of prayer. House of worship, house of prayer. Kind of goes hand in hand. Jesus says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for the nations. Now, it's just not praying when you come to church. It's just not praying in emergency situations. A lot of people pray in reaction to need instead of being proactive in prayer. God wants to give you direction. And he wants to give you guidance to avoid pitfalls. And you have your spirit antennas up so you won't go into things that you shouldn't go into. Build relationships with people you shouldn't build relationships. And he begins to guide you in the right steps. Because the steps of a righteous person is order of the Lord. The only way to stay righteous is through prayer. Prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. I think we can all use a little bit more on this area because sometimes, you know, we, we get off track, but get back in there. Let me move on to the third one. We build with the house of healing. Faith, signs, and wonders. 
miracles. This is a Holy Ghost hospital where people come in need and we don't condemn them. We hug them. We pray for them. Even if they don't smell right. Even if they're not taking care of their body. It doesn't matter because we accept all people of all walks and all because we believe in the miracle power of God. Our God is a miracle working God. And I want to read the scripture to you. An example of healing in the Bible. Luke chapter 13. I'm going to get ready in a minute, guys. Luke 13, 10 says, a spirit, it talks about the spirit of infirmity. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And she was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to himself and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. She got upright at that very moment. Just like I was saying earlier, you could have all these problems for years, but you come into the presence of God, and one moment's time, that problem's gone. My wife, when we first got together, you know, it's not only physical healing. God wants wants to heal damaged emotions, too. And sometimes the damaged emotions can be more hurtful than a physical condition. And it could get you in a place where you're walking with your head down. And I remember Kim, she wasn't like that, though. But I remember she, her posture wasn't so great. She would kind of go like that. And when we started dating, I started pushing her back in. <laughs> Holding her shoulder, trying to push it in. She goes, well, you know what's wrong with me is I have a lot of healing left. I was damaged. My father, my brothers, different parts of her life. And I, what I did, I said, well, I'm going to pray for you. And you're going to get through it, and you're going to start walking upright. You're going to have that new sense of confidence that if God be for you, who could be against you? God is the one in charge of your life, and he loves you more than anyone could ever love you, and he wants to raise you to be a woman that we're loose. I know there's people in this room probably going through the same thing. And lastly, I'm not going to labor this house of worship. I mean, house of outreach. And this is what you guys are already doing. You can go ahead and start playing the piano. But we do house of outreach evangelism, not just locally, but internationally. I like that we're going to Ohio. I like that we're also looking at possibly Boston. We're sending a, a few guys, pastors, that are going to go spy it out for me. Uh, Amsterdam's still moving forward. Still work to be done there. I mean, Panama's doing fantastic. There's so much going on internationally. And this is the international base. You guys are a launching pad. So some of you sitting in those seats comfortable right now. You can't be comfortable in this church. Because someone's going to slap you up, wake you up, step on you, kick you. Spiritually speaking. He won't let you sit. I won't let you sit. Same spirit that came from the mother church is here in this room. Come on, give the Lord praise as you stand. Come on, dude. Come on, give me that praise, the hallelujah praise. A shout, a praise, a loud. Come on. Come on, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. If you have a need in your life, come to the altar. The breakthroughs are here. Come on. Whatever the need may be, come and praise him at the altar.
a sister, lay hands on their shoulder, someone next to you. If you see a sister, brother to brother, this, this is what we call body ministry. When you lay hands on somebody, the power flows through you, but also to you. And whatever you're praying for them about, God wants to meet your needs. As you pray for them, God will meet your needs. You know what he wants to do? Look at me for a second. Look at me. He wants to get you out of what you've been and know, or even our mission statement says, he wants to give you a sense of dignity, a sense of destiny, and a sense of belonging. That you're part of a family. In our family, we don't let them down. Even if we have squabbles, we're still family. We're still like blood brothers, blood sisters in the spirit realm. So we're going to pray for each other like family right now. Go ahead, pray hard. Take about two minutes to pray. Go, go hard. Pray for them. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. We lift them up to you. We lift them up to you. You're worthy, God. We pray that you get a destiny, a spirit of dignity, belonging to them. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus, oh, I'm chosen for something. 